How many bullet wounds? And most important, did my loved one suffer? Pain and suffering is concern. And uh, we can answer those questions on uh, day one on the basis of the injuries, such as when there's a damage to the brain, bullet wound to the brain, that causes immediate loss of consciousness at that point. Uh, and telling that to a family can often be uh, very um, uh, helpful at a tr trying time to the family. So that's why we were called. I must say when we were called, uh, Mr. Crump had said they'd been trying to get the federal, the FBI, the federal government involved uh, without, without success at that time, and that's why they wanted me to come in, and shortly after we started the autopsy, whoops, Channel 5, I'm sorry, uh, after we started the autopsy, uh, uh, then it was announced that they were going to do another autopsy, which is fine, because uh, it shows the interest and the concern the federal government has in this kind of death, and you're here all here because many black men die uh, of accident, of homicide, uh, every day in this country, and rarely, and never, as far as I recall, has the President of the United States got involved. The only other time the President got involved, I remember, was Charles Manson. Uh, did his thing and you guys weren't born in those times and he was very upset by it, but not in a civil rights way So I think that uh, You know uh, understanding what's happening and one thing I want to ask add here though Mary case is the chief medical examiner in st. Louis County and she's a very excellent uh, forensic pathologist and I'm sure her work will turn out to be very very excellent when it's released but again it hasn't been released yet and the family wants to, to know certain simple questions that so far we've been able to answer. Um, Sean uh, Parcells is, has uh, uh, been uh, instrumental in the autopsy evaluation. I don't know if you want to point at anything on the, uh, on the sure. um, anatomy of the gunshot wounds, that, uh, that beautiful, drawing. Uh, first of all, I'm Professor Sean Parcells, and I would like to thank everyone for bringing me into this case, and we're here for the family to answer questions about what happened to Michael Brown. And I want you guys to understand that when an autopsy is done, that we look at the body in an anatomical position. This is the anatomical position. This is not how we stand, how we walk, but medically speaking, we like to describe wounds this way. And as you all know, Dr. Bodden and I concluded that he was shot at least six times. We've got one to the very top of the head, the apex. We've got one that entered just above the right eyebrow. We've got one that entered the top part of the right arm. We've got a graze wound, a superficial graze wound, to the middle part of the right arm. We've got a <clears throat> wound that entered the medial aspect of the right arm. And we've got a deep graze wound that produced a laceration to the palm of the right hand. Now these two, where the X's are, represent what Dr. Bodden and I feel are possible re-entry wounds. So the wound that hit the forehead right above the right eyebrow actually came out right around the right eye and went back in and then it exited again right here in the jawline and came out and went back into the right shoulder. That's from one bullet. Now we, uh, we have to confer that with the first autopsy. This wound right here to the side of the chest is also a possible re-entry wound. Now, which wound on the arm that correlates to, we're not sure. We have to correlate all of this with the first autopsy. And the other critical point that I want everyone to be very clear on is that this wound to the medial aspect of the right arm just generally speaking, 
happened right about here. Okay? So what Dr. Bodden and I feel that occurred, and by the way, this red mark is showing that same wound. This is not a separate wound. This is showing the same wound in the same location in that arm, but you're looking at it from the back. And as the attorneys were saying, there was a witness statement that said that he was walking away and the gun goes off and he kind of jerks. So the question asked to us was, could that wound occurred from him walking away and then he turns around? It's consistent with that. However, understand too that while the shot could have come from the back, because if I'm standing here walking along and get shot from that direction, you see I pull my arm up, it's in that same general area. The arm is a very mobile part of your body. So it also could have occurred when he was putting his hands up. So I put my hands up and you see where that wound is at. It could have happened if he put his arms across in a defensive manner. We don't know. And we still have to look at other aspects of this investigation before we can really start piecing things together. Dr. Bodden? Yeah, the, the attorneys behind me thought that there might be a question among you. Uh, we're here to see the young look. Uh, there, there, there could be consistent with his going forward or going backward, but there for the front, and if he was shot uh, going forward, uh, uh, he would collapse uh, right away. The, the uh, problem, yeah, so it, it's possible. There are a number of different uh, possibilities to, to that. Can you tell how far away the problem? Yeah, the question was how far away, yes. We can tell certain distance. We can tell the distance from the muzzle of the gun to the body or, and the body's clothing. Uh, if there's the closer the weapon is to the body, the more powder residue there'll be on the body and the skin and the clothing. In this instance, there's no uh, gunshot residues on the skin surface. Uh, so that the muzzle of the gun was at least one or two feet away, the muzzle at the time of discharge. It could have been 30 feet away, it would be the same thing. But in order to be firm about that, we also have to look at the clothing, which we haven't had the opportunity to look at because sometimes the clothing can filter out gunshot residues. Doctor, can you say how many times he was actually shot because you were talking about Yeah. yeah. There, there are six bullets struck him. Okay. Six bullets struck, and two may have uh, re-entered uh, and three bullets were recovered at the first autopsy, for, according to our report. Uh, there were the, the two head wounds and uh, the bullet in the chest stayed in the body and were removed at the first autopsy uh, from our examination of the body. One of the things that's going to be important for, for us to see is the x-rays, uh, the, the old black and white x-rays that will show where the bullets were at, before the autopsy was started. And that's documented in x-rays taken before an autopsy in a gunshot wound case. Do you know those exist? Sorry, do we know those x-rays exist? Okay, uh, yes, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Mary Case and they did, the, they did all the proper x-rays, photographs, and uh, they should be available at some time. Uh, whether today or whether three or four months from now often depends on what the prosecutor wants to do. That is, Mary Case could have told you everything I'm telling you on day one, uh, but often in an investigation like this, it's not uncommon for prosecutors not to want information re released. But I think in my experience, when that happens, it only gets the community more upset. What? No, ma'am. Only, only, are you a member of the media? I'm not. Okay. Only the media. Only the media. I, I didn't hear. Do you expect to get access to the clothing, and were there any signs of any struggle? Right. 
two things, uh, access to the clothing. I think at some point, we should, uh, the defense should have access to the clothing. That depends largely, the clothing is now, from Dr. Case's uh, uh, advice, in the Los Angeles, St. Louis uh, County Police Agency, normally, they're going to be looking at it. Um, it's up to them when the defense, uh, not defense, the families uh, uh, ought, uh, will have access to it. So at some time, there will be access to it and the results. As far as the other part of the question was, were there any signs, any signs of a struggle? Uh, there weren't uh, signs of a struggle. In talking about a struggle, one of the things that the attorneys have also asked for is the medical uh, examination of the officer uh, who uh, was in a struggle. So signs of uh, injury to the officer, to to um, uh, uh, Michael Brown uh, are both needed. One thing is that there are abrasions around the right side of Mr. Brown's uh, face, rubbing against the ground, which happened, as best we can tell, when after the gunshot wounds, he fell flat down unprotected and got those abrasions. Otherwise, uh, no evidence of a struggle, and it would be important in evaluation of the case for, every, for the medical examiner, the FBI, for the defense, uh, not defense, the uh, uh, family to uh, see what happened to the officer. Yeah, I'll let you get over here for a sec. Our autopsy that we did, the, the, the first autopsy at, at the uh, county medical examiner Second one was at the uh, uh, Arthur, Lane, Arthur Lane funeral home where the body was delivered for uh, burial, uh, and we did that in the uh, office. And it was about three, four hour autopsy, a re autopsy. How do your findings resemble or differ from the county autopsy results? Well, we can't answer that until we see the county. I'm, I, my impression would be having done this some. 50 years or so, is that they're going to be very similar. Uh, I think they're available now. The autopsy records are available now. When it's going to be released is probably up to the prosecutor. Correct. Right, a, a few yeah. more. Yeah. Right here. Right. Excuse me. Right here. Right here. Well, the, the, the autopsy itself. Can, is it uh, consistent with police or, or uh, witnesses? Uh, there are many different witness testimonies. Many of them uh, seem to line up uh, uh, in one direction, some in another direction. Uh, right now, till we get more information, till we get from a forensic science point of view, can't distinguish, can't make a, a definite judgment. This, uh, uh, now, the lawyers who have interviewed witnesses, we haven't interviewed, we don't interview witnesses, uh, uh, may be impressed with some witnesses who, see, who seem more, uh, uh, more uh, uh, trustworthy than others, and as the police are doing too. This is what juries are supposed to do. Juries are supposed to look at the witnesses and tell who's telling the truth and who isn't. Well, lawyers do that all the time. And uh, so they, they uh, have more information than we have. But right now, from the science point of view, we can't uh, um, determine which witness, and they're all different kinds of uh, uh, observations made, uh, is most uh, consistent with all of the forensic findings. Dr. Dr. Uh, Jim Lee Green. Dr. Lee Green. Doctor, you mentioned transparency, you mentioned scientific information, and you mentioned standards. Was there any investigative reason, any scientific reason why this information could not have been released after day one? Is there any well, no. Th this is a judgment based on, and this is one of the things that the family was concerned about. Even though we know when an autopsy is done, when any autopsy is done that you guys go to, 95% of the information is, is available right away. Stab wounds, gunshot wounds, things like microscopic slides and toxicology which may be a value, but don't determine the cause of death, whether or not it